Thank you, everyone. I think uh, we will straight dive into the topic of uh, omni-channel, the path to value. And I'm personally very interested in the next 45 minutes, you know, in uh, trying to understand what are the challenges, what is the importance, what is the future of omni-channel. And uh, we will actually start with actually trying to understand what is the importance of omni-channel strategies so, and all today, yeah? So when I say about importance of omni-channel, so when uh, in this competitive landscape, every business is want to focus upon to come out of their bombarding other messages. They right. everyone want to focus upon customer centric approach. They right. want to feel that every customer have been focused with the personalization. So they want to be uh, hyper personalization experience will be better for all their customers. Right. So multi-channel will be acting in a silos model. But uh, when I say about omni-channel, it has some kind of integrated connection. It focus more about customer journey. Right. It will tell about uh, the customer's uh, buying experience, retention, and we can make the customer not to feel that they are left alone, even post sales. Right. That so it's way, very seamless. Yeah, seamless experience will be much more better, even for pre-sales and post-sales. That is what omni-channel yeah. is most needed. As of Hello? Yeah. Uh, the importance of uh, omni-channel uh, has to be viewed from a lens of uh, starting with the consumer behavior, right? Uh, we are in a hyper-connected world. Uh, impatience is in virtue. People don't want to wait for long. People expect everything to be seamless and people, in fact, take it for granted. Right. To that extent, any consumer across any industry would expect things to be taken care of. And I think bringing a thinking of omni-channel helps achieve that. Uh, there are different uh, downstream questions whether, you know, at what level you want to do it, how much you want to do it, uh, are you ready to, do, you know, make that investment, take that journey which is very arduous and, uh, you know, having handled uh, some of these, uh, you know, experiences of transition from uh, analog to digital, uh, I can safely say that, you know, a lot of self-assessment is required before you go down this journey. I think the importance lies somewhere between there, right? Whether the business demands it and from a consumer point of view, is it something which you are making essential? So one has to be very uh, clear in the direction in which you're going because uh, it requires a lot of investment, it requires a lot of commitment and uh, human resources, right? I think I would place uh, the importance uh, for brands and for partners like us, you know, who are consulting brands to go down this journey to be very clear of these uh, aspects. Right. So yeah, most of you, all, both of you all have covered the major points. Uh, out and out, I think the so, omni-channel uh, in today's age is uh, important overall uh, from uh, all industry standpoint to uh, build value from a customer standpoint. I think so. It, it becomes important that hey, you know what I. Hi. Huh. Uh, the customers uh, want to know and the consumers want, they don't want to be bombarded and they want ease the journey and the experience to, uh, to purchase needs to be super, super easy and uh, remember, I mean, they, they should remember it and that helps, I mean, that helps them to come back to the brand. So, so yeah, I mean. So why not uh, multi-channel and why omni-channel? So, okay. Uh, Okay, multi-channel, uh, th there's a basic difference between multi-channel and yeah. omni-channel, right? Multi-channel, the way we approach is, hey, you know what? Uh, this particular brand is there on uh, this channel, uh, is there on WhatsApp, they are doing something on hoardings, they are doing something on OH, everything. But, uh, but what they're doing is they're solving different problems using different channels. They're definitely present on all these channels, but they're not connected. The story is not tying back. Uh, what happens is you don't know the user journey, right? A user is going to go through multiple touch points. It could be uh, one of them, it could be multiple of them. So the story then starts looking very fragmented and that's when we lose the customer. So this is more holistic, it's more seamless? Yeah, when we come to Omnichannel, you know that there is a narrative, there is a singular proposition or there is a singular point that the brand is trying to communicate through all these different channels and also builds a great experience for the customer to engage with it. Right. I think 
the question that you phrased is quite interesting, right? I mean, why multi-channel and why omni-channel, right? I think one has to uh, take a step back and understand uh, the journey that uh, businesses and brands are today going through. There are businesses which have come from analog and they're transitioning into digital. There are businesses which have been born in digital and they're moving to hyper-digital in a different, uh, you know, uh, velocity. Uh, given that there are these kind of, uh, you know, realities which exist, and specifically for agency partners like us who are trying to consult, we need to be clear about this and then say that, look, the transitions have happened because channels or other brands didn't think about these channels to be combined together as a single entity. Hmm. When it comes to the singular experience, right, we spoke about it uh, earlier also, that, look, there are these yeah. experiences that people don't want any kind of fragmentation. Absolutely right. right? There is a certain amount of frictionless experience that everybody expects today. If I order a pizza, I expect it to be delivered. If I order a cab, the cab has to be there, right? They're taking things for granted. But when you have these kind of, uh, you know, user models which are existing and brands have to work their way and their businesses around it, one needs to be cognizant of, you know, who is actually at multi-channel and why. And if they are transitioning to making it an omni-channel experience, what is the value add that they are giving to different stakeholders who are touching this entire experience? Because it's not enough to say that, look, uh, you know, I have to move because everybody else is moving. Maybe you don't need to go the whole hog. Maybe you need to fix certain buckets which are actually causing a friction in the entire experience, right? And therefore, a very healthy assessment of where the business stands, where the brand stands today. And therefore, if we have to go down that path, what does it take to go down that route? It becomes very important for us to answer, ask these questions at the outset. In fact, okay. if I could take a minute to uh, quickly say, there is a certain framework that we follow at Wonderlab where we have a five ways approach where, where you first ask and get the aspiration clear. Then you get the entire alignment done for uh, the entire organization and all the stakeholders who are concerned. Then you actually try and calibrate and get people to follow that because it's not a single team or a person's agenda. Yeah. It's the organization's agenda. Then you activate the entire thing through pilots and then you analyze it. And when you complete this full cycle is when you are actually able to say that, look, are we going in the right direction? What kind of recalibration we need to do at different points of time, right? right. That's how I would think that you know one should uh, calibrate between a multi and omni uh, channel. So first and foremost, as a team, we got to assess uh, the objective for omnichannel and what are we trying to achieve and what is the nature of the business whether it's going offline to online or online to offline and that changes the course completely um, right so when we we started by saying it's the you know uh, path to value uh, so how is it path to value and value to home and how if i may Sure. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you a real-life example for everyone to understand this. So, sure. what happens is, uh, I saw an ad, uh, or I saw a communication from a, a retail brand. I'm taking retail for the time being, uh, and uh, it had a it had a very tight communication, uh, and I, I, I had multiple touch points. Right, it was not only my uh, uh, Instagram account, it was offline as well. So I moved to the offline store, right? And that's my uh, uh, offline touch point, and I got the same experience there, right? Then I decided to purchase, right? When when I when I made the purchase, everything from then was uh, communicated to me uh, proactively, without instigating or reminding them. Or, or with a follow-up. So they reminded me on my WhatsApp, they sent me an email, they connected me to the brand, and this was basically a TV. So, so all parties then became connected to me without me even lifting up a phone. I just had to make the payment. That's, that, that was my job, and to obviously select the product. Uh, now, when I, when I did this, my experience was so good. Uh, when I'm planning to purchase anything next, I know I will have to go and I would go to this retail outlet because it made my experience, first of all, seamless, hassle-free, and I didn't, and it was just beautiful, right? And obviously cost advantage comes into play, so I, I, I was getting uh, this at the same price where I was getting it at any other retail outlet, so I made the choice. I think if the brand is listening, I think they should be ready with a discount voucher for him, <laughs> you know, that he's ready to do the That's next purchase. I, didn't, I, didn't I think one uh, interesting thing that uh, lies in the word value, right, uh, one needs to understand uh, you're taking the entire ecosystem along. Right. And again, uh, I'll keep going back to the fact that we are going to consult brands to do this, right? So we right. need to be very clear of the value definition for different stakeholders in the entire exercise. There are customers who are the reason why everything is being done and reorganized. Also, at the same time, there are 
uh, you know, internal stakeholders, employees, the frontline staff, etc., who are again, are, whose definition of value has to be understood very clearly. Right. So when you ask saying that, you know, what is the value, the part to value, it's also critical to define the value for whom and like yeah. you asked, right, <laughs> who is it for creating value for? Yeah. And one has to create the entire clarity at the outset before embarking on these exercises of, uh, you know, creating an omnichannel experience. There are value creation which will happen even for partners who are trying to create that. Like Mehul gave the example of the, you know, that entire, uh, you know, seamless touch points integrating one system with the other, uh, that becomes the, you know, end result and how it will manifest itself. But if you look at the value creation for every stakeholder in that process, whether it is the technology partner, whether it is the uh, distribution, whether it is even the suppliers, etc., that definition has to be clear and it has to be understood singularly by everybody. Only then can one say that, no, we are genuinely trying to create value. The part to value will come in because, yes, uh, at a very simplified level, one would say that I want to make my customer experience seamless, but it comes at a cost, okay. right? And capital is not available freely on, uh, on tap. And if you keep that lens in mind, suddenly you will rethink how you want to create value for customers if you are going down the path of, uh, you know, this omnichannel thing. Because these things are fabulous. They are uh, very intuitive when you think about it. Uh, but what people and typically what even brands underestimate is the kind of investments that are to go in. And uh, lastly, but uh, you know, very clearly, there has to be a very clear commitment. Because when you are trying to create value, you are taking stakeholder capital, you are taking shareholder capital in some cases, right? You need to be accountable for that. So you need to have these things uh, at the back of your mind before uh, you know, consulting and going down this road. Uh, that's what I would think. So that's, so yes, please. When, uh, when you say about the value, what it really gives is right. the customer loyalty. Right. That loyalty factor will make every customer to become a brand advocate. So yeah. they will be making your brand to be recommending for their families and friends and that kind of value will be coming only because of Omnichannel because when they have sensed that Omnichannel experience and the seamless experience from a brand, they will for sure recommend that brand for other colleagues or maybe their friends so and everything. This that is interesting because what you're saying is uh, loyalty really typically was considered as a separate subject, separate domain. We would talk about rewards, we would talk about many other things, but here with sheer experience, the seamless experience, we are creating loyalty here. That, that's what yes, you're saying. Major talking. factor is about the retention factor comes back with the royalty and uh, so the customers want to come back to again and again and want to have that experience because they will be seeing that peak whenever say that the memory of peak end will be much more when you see about the excitement and something happened yeah. you will be so happy to realize that excitement again and again right. so that peak end is what a psychology sticks with this right so that but is with it. all these benefits i would like to ask what are the challenges really because you did mention um, jatin that uh, you know, you have to ask so many questions. Making everyone to get connected yeah. and uh, making the resource investment and everything seems to that be the biggest one of the factor. Investments, so. like Jatin rightly mentioned, it's not a simple process. It's not a plug, plug and play model, right? Hmm. Uh, you think of it and you kind of implement it. It's not that simple. There are, uh, we were discussing this, right? Uh, there are multiple people who come into play if you want to deploy Omnichannel. Right. right, it's not only a CMO's uh, playbook. It it's a business head, it's a CEO coming in, the CTOs coming in, making sure what is feasible, what is not. Hmm. Uh, it's a huge time and money investment. I think the the point to look at for uh, from a challenge point of view, right? Hmm. Uh, I would I would put them into two uh, spectrums. One end the functional challenges, and on the other end there are human challenges. When you are trying to go down the path of creating an omnichannel uh, experience. On the functional side, you'll have the hard, uh, you know, questions to address. What kind of tech infrastructure do you have currently? What is the kind of data maturity you have in the organization at the, you know, at the outset? As the industry, is the industry ready for that kind of management of data and transitioning to a single truth, a single source of truth, right? So a lot of these hard questions which you have to ask on the functional side, uh, you know, when you're looking at the challenges. You look at the other end of the spectrum, when you're looking at uh, the human uh, challenges, right, which are uh, primarily related to adoption. Right. See, a lot of times, and uh, this I've seen uh, in my, uh, one of my previous experiences uh, with the private sector bank, the internal organization has to be rallied behind that uh, purpose. You have to understand very clearly why we are doing this. Because if you don't have the wherewithal, if you don't have the right kind of people to lead this change, right, it is likely to meet with a lot of failure and hiccups in execution. The second dimension to the human problem is also the kind of partners that you choose. Because there are a lot of things, and again, uh, due respect to you know everybody trying to offer one-stop solution, etc., a very brutal self-assessment is required. 
as a brand, am I really ready to take that investment, get these kind of partners who will genuinely guide me and see me through the, through the entire journey? I think if you were to put these things in perspective, right, the functional challenges, the you know, human challenges, then derive a very clear and honest roadmap as to saying where can I really you know, put my finger and say, okay, these are my strengths and I can, I can actually address this with these kind of partners. And let's face it, there's not going to be one partner. It is like uh, Mehul said, there will be different Stake talent, different stakeholders that you will bring together to deliver that experience. Right. And that helps you try and then, you know, have a very honest assessment of your challenges and then you're ready to, you know, go in that direction, right? Right. Also from a consumer perspective, we spoke about all the benefits and how seamless experience can lead to loyalty, purchase, all of that, right? But also today we know that we are intruded a lot more than before uh, with the, you know, continuous tracking and all of that. Do you see that as a challenge? I think the consumer today, nothing better than that. You're uh, at a very different level. Uh, every brand in one way or the other is trying to make the consumer lazy. <laughs> Least effort, maximum amount of, uh, you know, convenience. Let's face it, that's what reality of life is today. Okay. Uh, but that's interesting, right? It, when you say lazy consumer, you're talking also of making life easy. Hmm. And when you have to make it easy, you have to work very hard in the background to make that experience easy. And that's the, to my mind, the genesis of what Omnichannel would, should really do. Uh, but let's look at the other side of what you're asking, right? It also leads to intrusion. Are there that, any don'ts is what I'm trying to understand. Correct. I think that don'ts would largely come from, uh, you know, avoiding wastage. And that requires a clear definition as to the, what are the things that we will not do as a brand, right? Hmm. If you know the user is not See, taking… See, when, when example, if you have made some purchases in an uh, Instagram, if you hmm. made a purchase of jacket in Instagram, for a same person, if you're again showing the jacket ad, hmm. there is no use of showing that, right? Right. So it is a kind of wastage where we, we can easily avoid that, mm, don't want to, what shouldn't be done is more focused on omni-channel compared to what should be done. Oh, so interesting. Sure. Yeah, I mean, see, from a customer standpoint, that intrusion is a fundamental problem for the generation now, right? I mean, that's, and I think so more and more awareness is there amongst younger set of audience, yeah. definitely. Uh, when it comes to omni-channel and uh, intrusion to customers, it's, it's not specific only to omni, right? It's, it's a problem of digital. Right. So, I mean, when you are when you are devising omni-channel strategy, I mean, the beauty of omni-channel is the comms. Uh, I mean, if if you can communicate in a way that it doesn't feel like intrusion, you made it. So, yeah. I mean, that's It'll that's be a how failure I mean. of uh, the entire purpose of creating an omni-channel experience if you are going to bombard it, uh, bombard your prospect with something which is irrelevant. And uh, that again becomes a useful uh, metric. I would say that you know whether you have to assess whether you've done the right things. Look, irrespective of uh, whatever the brand might want to do, uh, there is going to be some encroachment on data, right? I mean, that is that is a reality. The question really is that how does the brand really then fortify itself when you're down the path of creating an omnichannel experience to say that, no, this is where I draw the line. This is yeah. something which I will not cross as a brand. Now, if that data is available, I mean, first party data today, we know the kind of value it holds, right? If it is available from multiple sources, so be it. And yeah. the consumers are discerning. They understand where this yeah. comes from. But the brand shouldn't be seen as being somebody who's actively, you know, uh, engineering that uh, dissonance, yeah. I would say, right? That's something that we have to guard against. Right, right. Interesting. So, uh, when it comes to actual execution of omni-channel strategies, uh, there at the level of execution, do you see any red flags or any big challenges there from the execution point of view? See, when, uh, when it comes, yeah, yeah, no problem. Everyone has. So, see, execution-wise, the only thing is making it uh, an automation becomes the biggest um, kind of a challenge which may go wrong. Sometimes it wouldn't be understood like uh, what uh, have been transformed from multi-channel to omni-channel because whenever we say omni-channel, many of them will get confused uh, with um, multi-channel because okay. most of the agencies in India will be operating in multi-channel because that coordination between the teams will be just saying the same, right? So it's not like understanding the journey in a much more better way. So making that, we need to integrate uh, automation in that process for uh, making that automation. Uh, for sure, if we have done in a, not in a proper way, it may go in a wrong thing as beyond our control. It will burn more money in that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it, will, so uh, it will consume lots of uh, time 
and we couldn't so time understand time and money both. money will be burning mm -hmm. at that ratio okay as agencies we work with brands right. and brands have multiple agencies for different purposes right uh, imagine all of them being on the same page can you just imagine that i mean that's a challenge right when you when you say about execution you need to make sure all partners beat their uh, internal comms to the cop com to uh, other agencies mainline social so on and so forth all of these guys need to be on the same page and i think so there is a challenge there i mean from an execution standpoint right. it's very important across teams internally of the brand then external partners they all need to be on the same page to make sure if there is a journey which is being created right. for in order to create value and there is humongous amount of time being invested obviously money being invested in anticipation of some sort of conversion and business value if either of this fail even one party fail it's a domino effect right. it's gonna right. at the execution side uh, i would break it up into two parts right one of the side of the brand uh, it has to become the organization's agenda and again as partners who would consult uh, brands to try and uh, you know go down this journey it is important to ensure that this is coming straight from the board down to the shop front because see uh, if there is a if it becomes a departments or a teams agenda right. then typically it fails because there is not sufficient buy in and wherewithal to push that through that's point one point number two if you look at it from the partners or the architects who are engineering this entire exercise right we need to be honest enough to call out okay at an execution stage if we find that there is a deficiency if we find that the let's say the partners uh, the clients uh, teams are not trained or they're not adequately equipped enough to handle the omnichannel experience at different touch points we need to be honest enough to call out i think a lot of times uh, again uh, as a as a uh, been on both sides of the table as a client and as an agency uh, you know a partner mm -hmm. that honesty is required because if you're not brutally honest to point out that right at the time of execution you will find that you become then as a agency hmm. person you become the you know uh, person in the spotlight to say why did you not call out earlier and i think that's what any brand partner would expect they would expect uh, you know at the time of execution that you call out and you state the deficiencies solutions yeah. can be brought in i think that's yeah. the easier part i was part. just coming to that actually so therefore we identified automation we identified coming on the same page uh, by multiple stakeholders all of these uh, challenges right uh, are there any practices that one can immediately pick up as uh, uh, to to solve these challenges um, are there any practices that you or hacks or tips that you can share see uh, on a larger scale no i wish i had it all together <laughs> but uh, so the way i mean I'm, i'm i'm telling my personal experience the way we tackle things so that uh, it becomes universal for brands as well so the way we start our uh, planning process hmm. is to identify what the brand advantage is uh, okay. we identify what the consumer really is looking for in that category not for the, from the brand sure. and sure. one of the most important identification is what the category is doing all together sure so this is the entire homework that goes into so it so once you have that homework you, we boil down to a purpose a strategic space i would say so the strategic space helps us say that any communication across any medium or any channel should be true to this singular promise right right, right? any example so let's um, kind of get into delve into some of the successful examples of omni channel strategies being applied anybody anybody want, you want to go first um, we we did it for an uh, hospital brand okay so it's it's all about like uh, we want to make uh, the the patients like to realize about the brand right so we what we did is we even made them to book an appointment even after booking the appointment we will be taking that uh, what are, what kind of problems they are facing that it hmm. can be uh, passed along in the email huh. and the same way it, when it has been email dropped and it has been documented in a same with the social media campaign for personally they will be reaching them as well okay so in that way it gives some kind of what to say even we can't say for the patients we can do that but we did it with some offers like we will say that you can come up for the free consultation next okay. time in that way it have correlated sure. with the social media campaign and it again made it up into the uh, like uh, repeat yeah mm. it has been taken in that forward okay okay so yes, good too. examples uh, i would not go brand specific but i can uh, cite from a industry or segment specific uh, okay. you know narrative in the ma indian sure. market context i think bfsi has really done yeah. phenomenally well and they have really yeah. uh, you know bridged the gap from 
where it started to where it is today. Healthcare is another good example where again, uh, like some of the examples that were sort of cited, that even if it's a, uh, you know, a, a simple uh, ordering of a prescriptive uh, medicine, from where that value chain has moved on to try and then look at cross-sell, upsell, etc. That really again is another good example. Okay. I would just call out one thing that, you know, when you're looking at success stories, look at uh, what is that uh, velocity that uh, that particular industry is facing. So if you have low value, high velocity uh, situation, right, where multiple transactions, like banking, everyday transaction, you do it almost every day, right? Huh. Now, points of failure are likely to be higher, and customers expect that, and that is where the the beauty or the promise of omnichannel has to come through. That if he walks into a branch, the branch person should know exactly where the failure has happened. They should be able to pick up the thread from there and resolve it. Okay. So I would think that the success stories are somewhere in these industries. There are a lot of examples. And I think there is nobody, and uh, this is my personal opinion, nobody I think has cracked omnichannel in this country to its tourist form. It's a journey, right? You have to keep continuously improving on it. Rigor is important to make sure that you know you don't let go of the agenda that you set for yourself. Because if you are going down this road, it's a path of no return. You can't abandon it one way because you're doing a lot of disservice to everybody who's put money behind this uh, money and effort and intention behind the journey, right? I would think that those are the things that one should uh, look at when you're looking at success stories in the in the market. Uh, I have one example. I just want to cite that while Barbie and everything is happening, I think so Disney, I don't know how many of y'all have visited Disneyland or Disney World. The way they have built an experience, not not the park itself, but from the time you enter or you decide that you want to go or attend uh, or be a part of the Disney world, from there till the end moment, the way they have crafted their uh, entire experience, that multiple touch points, the comms that they do, the benefit or the value that's created for the customer, it's amazing. I mean. That's that's an example, and people can actually look out. I mean, they can search. They are, I feel, one of the best in building or, or understanding omni-channel uh, as a path to value. So I'm going to combine one question, which is about what are the key ingredients when we are talking about these success stories? What are the key ingredients you think really helped, and also the matrix? So when we are saying calling something a success. What are the metrics that we are looking at when it comes to omnichannel? See, when, when you say about the metrics, when the obvious refund ratio has reduced, that is the biggest matrix. The return ratio reduced, that is the biggest matrix. You can, and customer rate, and the satisfactory rate, if it has been increased, then it, we can say that is the metric. We can analyze that omnichannel is working out or not. Because the most, it is related to the customer's end goal, we want to retain them and we want to make them satisfied to the core. Right. So when this this has been given with that and uh, we analyze that, uh, okay, this customer is giving lots of good reviews back to us without even asking and they are recommending us and that kind of thing will be a good analysis about that has been a good metric to analyze this. Much this beyond sales, it's also about the yeah. overall experience with reviews and all of that. I would think, in fact, uh, actually, the metrics have to be looked at in, uh, again, two lenses. One are the hard operation, uh, I mean, mm. functional metrics, right? You'll have the NPSs, you'll have the, uh, you know, average order value increasing, hmm. the kind of churn rate that you're able to predict, etc. There's a lot of these metrics which you can use functionally to try and assess whether the entire Modern. journey of uh, crossing over to an omnichannel uh, uh, has been a success or not a success, right? Hmm. On the other hand, you have the biggest metric, right? Today, let's face it, brands are built on the basis of conversations. No longer is it about you know brand telling ki ye main hu, wo main hu. No, it's about she telling me that hey, you know what? I went to the restaurant, fantastic menu. Go try. That's where the brand is being built. Now that is the biggest metric. If the conversations can go up and the conversations are more positive than negative, I think you hit the nail on the head. And that is probably, to my mind, one of the biggest metrics that the brand should actually track for outside of all the functional metrics that you should ascribe to at each leg of the you know entire transition journey. So Shout would, out to all the listening yeah. tools no, and all of not that. Not only all listening the tools, but I think the success story is the fact yeah. that, look, uh, the experience matters. Right? Today, yeah. it is, uh, I mean, just, just just put hand to heart and you see, you'll, you'll know what you're talking about. Right. If, you, if you have recommended or if you have got a recommendation right. with somebody, the brand has already scored there. Right. It's already scored there. So I think uh, Jatin, I mean, hit the nail on the head. Uh, mentions, conversations, not only the online sphere, but also offline. So okay. building on brand advocates in normal humans, right. like normal people who are who are vouching for the brand, that's what is a good metric, apart from obviously retention, conversion, yeah. uh, order value increase, uh, views, engagement, so on and so forth. Right. 
great. We are running out of time, but I have to ask this question. Uh, from morning, I think it's come up in every discussion, but when it comes to future and uh, AI, what do you think, uh, how is it going to play the role? So AI it? will save lots of time because uh, you can't go uh, hyper-personalization for every individual customers. What AI can support and uh, AI and ML can do that whatever the uh, saving in time, it will be giving lots of exposure to reach it out to the right audience mm -hmm. because it will measure about uh, commonly about what this customer want or that customer don't want. It will easily um, make it out. Humans, it will be so difficult to find it out in that way. Mm -hmm. I think uh, with the advent of AI and you know the way it's getting all pervasive, right. uh, a lot of the magic will happen in the mind reading. I think the more predictive way more in predictive. which uh, you know brands are able to understand, assess, and even uh, you know forecast uh, possible uh, requirements as customers will have is going to be very interesting. And uh, as we talk right now, it is actually cutting across categories, cutting across industries and segments. Yes. So hence, uh, any kind of algorithmic learning that can be brought back to improving, enhancing, or arresting uh, any kind of dissonance in the customer experience will only make omnichannel uh, a far better you know, proposition for brands to uh, uh, rely on, right? I think that's probably where it will go and get very, very interesting. So very intuitive, very pr uh, predictive, that's what is uh, the Yeah, future. I mean, both the points mm -hmm. are uh, basically predicting. Right. It needs to, it'll help us predict better. Right. And it'll hel definitely help us personalize it far better. Pers yeah, okay. right? What because about time saving? That's the, that, by the that's virtue of it, better. right? But I mean, to manually personalize it's near to impossible, right? It can't. But a machine learning, understanding, predicting, and hence personalizing. Right. Basis of cust because customer experience gets better if it's personalized, right? If it's common for all, it's not good. I mean, it's average. It's like, okay, sab ke le. So that's, I mean, predicting personalizing. and personalizing. Obviously, uh, it'll, it'll definitely save time. It'll definitely create more value. Right. That's about it. Yeah. Great. Um, any questions? Any questions from the audience? It's a post-lunch session. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyone has questions. If in case you do have any questions, you might want to raise your hand. We'll get a mic passed to you. If not, you can always continue with the tweeting. Do we have any further questions? I believe not. Okay, we do have, yes. You know, it's always good to ask yeah, twice. <laughs> All right. Uh, can we get a mic, please, pass, since I committed? Can we get a <laughs> mic? <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, I'm It's all about communicating, that's all. <laughs> All right, ma'am, your name from where you're from, so we get yeah, to know you good better. Good afternoon, my name is Dimple. I represent UU Media. Uh, so one question which was like, you know, what you have given in comparison between the multi-channel and omni-channel. So any take away which you can guide on the rural consumption on digital? Because it's very fragmented, you know, for, for now we are talking about 5G, it's just a surface level, I mean, a surface level announcement. But if you see the reality, the grassroots level, it's very, you know, it's very difficult for us to get a base to understand what is their consumption pattern yeah. from the rural perspective. That is the major chunk where India is, you know, based Correct. in. So uh, I'll I'll start with the digital consumption part in rural exactly. is definitely fragmented. Yes. That's why I think so. Jatin mentioned, you know. We need to be, re first we need to understand who our consumer is mm. and whether our organization is ready to understand whether, what path are we planning? Are we planning a path between analog to digital or we are, ca we are saying digital to hyper digital, right? Uh, where, where omni-channel and multi-channel come to play. Yeah. So these are brands where we are targeting, right? Uh, where, where, where we are targeting rural audience. We will always be in a multi-channel approach. Again, the reason being the journey and the usage is not, the digital, digital consumption is not penetrated that heavy in, that, in those areas. That but is the weak point of it. So designing anything like a campaign. So I basically am a network marketing lead for a channel, which, hmm. is, which is catering to the rural audience, hmm. right? So every time I have to depend on the ATL, which is like a, 
like a hybrid model. I can't say hybrid model. Correct. But I have to do a deep dive. What is that digital consumption is? If I want to say I am unable to design any market campaigns there, or maybe if I can, even if I design, it's it turns futile. Again, I mean, if you can understand the audience and the audience uh, 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 main topics they talk about, which ties back to your brand, and again, I mean, it's it's not that easy. I mean, it cannot be answered in a yeah, in I one know, line. But you have to understand the audience to design a campaign or a narrative which reaches out to them uh, in a strategic manner. I think so Jatin wants could, to contribute. Uh, yeah. If I could distill your question, Dipul, right? Yeah. Uh, if you're trying to understand on the one hand, and please correct my understanding if it's wrong. If you're saying that, look, I have a primarily rural audience and yeah. I need to understand how can I bring in omni-channel context of our conversations? Yes. How do I bring in that experience there and make it uh, a good equalizer for them? And on the other hand, if I were to further distill your question, say that, look, there is a way in which my audience will stay engaged given the kind of communication message. Is that correct? Is that yes, a yes, fair yes, assessment? Yes. Okay. If that is the assessment, here is the way I would think, uh, you know, one could look at this. If you're looking at uh, inclusivity for that audience for giving the omni-channel experience, uh, it's always uh, back to the basics. It's about following your consumer. If you know your consumer inside out, if you have a very good understanding of who your consumer is, what are the habits, etc. It's the classic way of... Uh, understanding marketing which is still not out of the window, right? So you should probably try and get that uh, aspect right. Once you do that, right, use technology because it's a great level of which we all know today. The same YouTube which was supposed to be the urban elite is now actually the first port of call for a lot of the rural folks who are using that for educating, empowering and entertaining them, right? Then you suddenly realize that, look, I mean, technology is no more that barrier. In fact, from a media point of view, you will be able to cherry pick the kind of messaging that you want to go after, the platforms that you want to go after. In fact, if you were to go with a platform first approach, right, you would say, okay, look, my audiences are primarily using, let's say, the short video apps, and they are, th that's where the maximum engagement is happening. You may be able to tell your brand that, look, that probably is a better vehicle to connect with them. Get them to experience the brand through that medium. Then maybe you bring in influencers, then maybe you bring in your, you know, content or what have you. But if you get that uh, understanding correct, then you are actually using this entire wherewithal to your advantage. Now, the second part of your question, right, if I were to distill it, saying that, look, what kind of communication messaging will make uh, sense for you know talking to them? That's more of a communication problem to solve, but you'll be able to at least be clear what not to do for those audiences, right? And that's probably, to my mind at least, that would be a good way to try and get clarity of thought before you go back to you know your client uh, with a solution. And if you if you were to, I mean, work with the you know on the same side of the table, you'll understand that the client may be able to give you some more understanding as to who the audience is. But always, uh, long story short, uh, follow your consumer. I think that's that's the best. If you're in doubt, ask the consumer. So yes, that's still yes, relevant. Yes, yes. So it's it's a learning uh, platform for me. Just just two minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Dimple, so but it's a, a learning platform for me. For, for so you are asking this question from Geo Center itself. It's a surprising after Geo. <laughs> yes, yes, after Geo also there is a lot of shift in terms of you know consumption, especially the kind of PGs that we are targeting to. So yes, there are uh, do's and don'ts, and there are ifs and buts to it. Yes, I mean, thank you, you for know, your, you know. Before this turns out to be a fireside chat, I might have to intervene. I'm just mm -hmm. kidding. Jokes apart. Uh, do we have, thank you so much, uh, Dimple, for your question on that. Do we have any further question? Maybe one more we can take. Otherwise, we'll have to wrap it up. Just giving a fair chance to everyone. All right. Okay, that says it all. Uh, thank you so much to our incredible panel. Let's give them a warm, warm round of applause. Thank you, Anjali, for curating thank it so, so wonderfully.